Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 73 for Friday the 25th of March 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and that guy right there is Kent. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. I am doing good. I what nailed a busy. I nailed that intro, though, dude. You got to give it to me. You, you did. You did. That like, was awesome. We we might be able to come out of beta one of these days. That was really good. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Very busy not. week. Very busy <laughs> week. Um, I didn't have shit to do at work, so I did course fourteen stuff all day, which is like a uh, horrible stuff. <clears throat> horrible stuff. Horrible stuff. It's it's professional. Uh, Professional development on the worst scale ever. So yeah, it's 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 pretty bad. I yeah. I started that and I I never completed it. And I I man, I got so much shit from my supervision, and I was like, yeah, well, I'm about to retire in a year, so I really don't care. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Hey, uh, we are not sitting here chilling out alone, man. We're not the only people that had busy weeks this week. We also have with Hell us no. with us today, Owen J J Stone, O Doctor on the internets. How are you doing tonight, man? Man, I'm still trying to figure out why we got porn music for the intro on this podcast. That might be <laughs> part of the reason why we're still in beta. I'm waiting for the dude to pop up with the pizza box. Hey, you like, you, is, you, we got some lube or something? We, got, we, got a, we, have we have to grab we have to grab the audio listeners uh, as as quickly as possible, and nothing grabs people like porn. Oh, apparently, apparently, <laughs> you know, I, like I said, I, I was wondering where the flashlights were and, you know, so uh, I don't know what's going on. I just I just heard that music. I'm like, well, OK, different kind of show. I thought, uh, <laughs> oh, well, OK, now I know. But you were already prepared <laughs> with the mood lighting, though, so we're, we, you should be good to go. You should be just you know, always I'm, ready. I'm, 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 I'm just mad I don't have a 70 stash to go along with the music. If I had it. <laughs> I mean, you need to cut that little beard off. You could be up in there in there. You, you ready to go. I can say get you a pizza box. And, yeah, a, and a, a, a trucker Owen, hat. I, I think you're the pizza man, Owen. Well, oh. I'm delivering pizzas. <laughs> La- ladies love pizzas. That's awesome. Ladies love pizzas. Um, oh, so, uh, so, so, Owen, how was your week? Uh, my week was good. I woke up. I went to sleep. I hung out with some kids and uh, hung out with my buddy. Saw Superman versus Batman. Uh, hung out with a couple ladies. Didn't go to sleep one night. I was on the phone call like I was like 16. That was fun until I had to go to sleep the next day. So I had a really good uh, non-productive week. I did zero amount of work all week, which is kind of great. I didn't even do any of my own podcasts. I was just a bum all week, just living <laughs> yeah. the dream, hanging out, making it do what it do. Uh, hey, so w- what did you think about Batman versus Superman? Did you like it? Yeah, let's go ahead and get into I this. I loved it. I love it. Yeah, so I I mean, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to give any spoilers or anything. No, no, just, no, no just spoilers. Just no feelings. Just no feelings. Cuz I I saw I saw it just a, a few hours ago myself. And um, Go ahead. Okay. What were your so thoughts? So critics keep saying how bad the movie is and how horrible the movie is. And they keep the reason they say it's bad is because the storyline doesn't match up, and I can't have any emotional attachment to the people of the story. So I don't really feel like like shut up. It's not an Oscar. It's a comic book, okay? And 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 did anybody watch Superman Returns when Superman had the like fake son that wasn't his son? They didn't know it was his son. He pushed the piano and all all he, go watch the movie again. All he did was catch stuff. He caught the glow from the planet. He caught the car that she was driving it wildly out of control. He lifted up the rock and that like he didn't do anything but catch and lift things. This <laughs> This movie, they punching, they fight. I mean, he got so mad that his eye, Superman's eyes lit up with the lasers of rage where his whole face was red, and he <laughs> held it back in restraint until he realized he couldn't blow something away. I'm not going to give it away. But, I mean, I'm like, oh, he hot because his eyes glow. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean, Wonder Woman came and she was doing her thing, and then, and then Batman, and then he was killing and fighting. And I'm saying, I've had 40 years of... Uh, Superman's parents died on a planet sending him to another place and John Kent died having a heart attack trying to teach his space son a lesson and his mom picked up for him. Uh, yep. Batman's parents died right in front of him and he had a life of vengeance. And become, like, I know the backstory. I don't need no backstory. I need fighting ninja. I need killing stuff. I need graphics and use of CGI and I got it. 
the worst part of the movie were the Easter eggs. Were not Easter eggs. They literally just like spit ketchup in your face. That was annoying. <laughs> where they tried to <laughs> lead you into what was coming in the future. But in general, just shut up and watch Superman go boom, things through his eyes because it's amazing. <laughs> Yes, man. I, okay, so I've been hating on this fucking movie for like a year and a half now. <coughs> saying like, oh my god, this is going to be horrible. I hated the name. I hated all the trailers. This is going to suck. Went to see it today. No, man, I'm a believer. Like, this, you you nailed it. This, this is an action-packed superhero movie. It's cool. It's just a fun time. Buy some popcorn. Have it's a good time. Fun. That's it. Yes, That's all you got to fun... do is enjoy the movie. Like I'm saying, like, did you watch Age of Ultron? That movie kind of sucked. And the thing <laughs> that people don't get is like, oh, it's not Iron Man. It's not Captain America. Because those are new movies that have been introduced to you. So you get to live the new lore and love of Iron Man and how pimp and cool he is. You already know how pimp and cool Batman is. So, yes, you have 14 different reboots that you judged against. And no Superman is ever going to be Christopher Reeves except for this new dude. He could be my Superman. Like, if he yep, came over yep. my house, I'd snuggle up and cuddle with this dude. Like, this dude <laughs> looking like, feeling like Superman. I mean, I ain't going to kick him out of bed. I'm just saying, he feels like Superman. And then Ben Affleck, you know I mean? He didn't try to do a Batman voice when everybody knows he's in their little robot suit. And that, that had an animatronic voice to it. But for the most part, he didn't try to do no old crazy voice. He just, yep. and then I, it was like, when he was kicking ass, it was real Batman. Like, he had a strategy. He had a plan. You see the plan and or strategy live itself out. It was a little comic booky where he was just wilding out. But I'm saying, go see the movie. It was so much fun. I'm trying to calm myself down. I, you <laughs> yeah. know, man, everybody know. was hating on the on the Batfleck thing. Like Ben Affleck can't be Batman. He's not Batman. Bullshit. Ben Affleck pulled that off. Ben Affleck was a good Batman. I don't know if you can see the ladies on my wall and my painting that I painted, but I'm all about the Superman. So I might be a little biased. But I'm just saying, it was fun, to say the least. It was at least fun, just a fun movie. So, Absolutely. So, so Amos, here's I my take. Seen it, so no, here, here's my take on it, though. Uh, a lot of people uh, took it to task over its similarities to the last Superman movie. Uh, but I haven't seen the last Superman movie, so I'm not going to watch that one until after I see Superman versus Batman, and then I can, uh, you know, just go in there with with eyes wide shut, you yeah. know, just. See it fresh yeah, don't, for the first don't worry time. about all that because the things that happened in that first movie that are important, they recap it in this yeah. movie. So yeah. don't worry about it. It's fine. So yeah, and even that saying. wasn't a bad movie because, again, they had to do the reboot or origin story crap again, which, again, I'm just glad that they didn't get into. But, I mean, even that origin story on that movie, which, again, people complain because it's not Christopher Reeves. They have an emotional attachment as a child, but that new reboot, when they were actually on Krypton, that shit was perfect. They were in there. They had the family suits on. They had the crest. They had the technology. All the stuff lined up, and they showed the exploration of a, another advanced planet. Like, what more did you want, bro? Like I said, these critics out here just be popping stuff and getting in people's heads. And I'm like, it, it's, it's Superman. And he, like, they come on, man. Like, what do you want? Like, what, what is <laughs> it really? What's supposed to happen? Am I supposed to cry during a Superman movie? Like, is it supposed to bring a tear to my eye? Like, what's, what is supposed to happen? Mm. <laughs> no, man. It was it was good. It was good. If you haven't seen it, go see it. I, at least go judge for yourself. If, if you think you're going to hate it, just go watch it. If you, if you hate it, that's fine. You can hate yeah. it. So, so clearly <laughs> so, that, Amos, was the, was your... uh, that was the geekiest thing you guys did this week, was go and watch that Absolutely. movie and, and live through that. For me, um, for, my for geekiest sure, yeah. thing that I did this week was... I, last week I, I expressed, even though I haven't published it because it's been so busy. Uh, last week I expressed how pissed off I was at OBS because it was just every time I loaded it up, it was changing things, and I, I it was I was basically resetting stuff up every time. So this week I went ahead and made the jump against Sergeant Muffin's recommendation and popped in uh, Wirecast, and that's currently how we're how we're streaming right now, and it's actually working pretty good. It's got a few things that I need to work on. But uh, so much more capable. But it took me two days to get it working, and yeah, um, <laughs> certain muffin well, says I'm it, dead to him. Um, right, but, but it is working. So it, it is. It is. It is. It, for now, for now, I'm I'm, I'm running a little uh, <laughs> little much on the computer, but it's handling it so far. So that was the geekiest thing I did this week. <clears throat> right on. Right on. Um, so so we, so we don't have any TED talks this week, but uh, you had something related to TED talks that you wanted to talk about. 
So, uh, oh, Doctor, have, have you uh, been a fan of the TED Talk? I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> well, then that's I, just, hey, I that's, have. That's better than. I than have the perfect introduction for you. Uh, stuff you should know. Did a they they do how stuff works and how things you know blah 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 blah. This week, this episode they just pushed out was how TED Talks work. And I've listened to the part first part of it before my uh, my drunken stupor f- made me fall asleep last night, but. This is this. If you've ever had an interest in TED Talks and you want to get into it and figure out what's going on with it, this is a perfect chance for it. Um, stuff you should know how TED Talks work. I uh, recommend the podcast in general. And of course, I'm going to recommend this show, even without having listened to the whole thing yet, just because it's, uh, uh, it's sure to enlighten people that have never heard of TED Talks. So there's that. Cool, cool. I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, you, you put that in the notes like an hour ago and I didn't have a chance to watch it. So yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, so, so basically, TED Talks are just the, the hyping up of a subject matter. <clears throat> yeah, typically they're they're informative. Uh, sometimes it's just presenting an idea, like, what if the world was like this? You know, it's kind of a conversation starter, which is why we highlight them on our show because it's it's a it's a good starting point for a, a conversation, whether it's techie or uh, uh, culturally based or just you know artistic or yeah. what have you. I mean, sometimes there's just really good stories on there that we like to share. So, yeah. yep. Now, the meat and potatoes of today's episode. Last week, we talked about Universal Pictures making a different straight out of Compton trailer for different races. And we wanted Odata to be on to discuss it. We didn't quite make that happen, but we had to, like, I've got to hear what Odata has to say about, Definitely. about this. So, well, one, well, one, thing, <clears throat> one thing that I love about Owen is that he never holds back. He says what is on his mind and he typically speaks the truth. And I want to hear I want to hear the truth. I want to hear the truth is from O Doctor. Truth is relative. What what do you th- well what do you <laughs> think? What is, is, what is the what is the truth is from O Doctor about the different trailers for Shayla <sighs> Compton? The long short of it is white people are scared of things. And so if you want to get white people to do things, you have to trick them into doing it. So again, the same thing I just talked about Superman, you have the lore and the knowledge of it. <clears throat> a lot of middle-aged white people that might have grew up having their friends maybe listen to NWA or they knew of NWA and they knew like three radio songs but never knew NWA would see those shows and think, I can't go see NWA. I remember when I was a kid and they were talking about the FBI and cop killers and the net. You know, I don't know what's going on NWA. So I could totally understand trying to trick people. It's like, you know, it's like when you want to go out on a date with a white girl. You, you stop by Starbucks and you make her happy. There's certain things that white people enjoy <laughs> that they know white people enjoy, so they have to put it out there. Uh, there was a fun trailer. I can't remember where it is now. I should have looked it up. But there was a trailer where they made it um, after the the guy that was Easy es manager, basically. Mm-hmm. They made the trailer about a struggling Jew trying to pull a group together <laughs> in, in the hard streets of Compton, and they cut the movie trailer to all his parts where he's talking about Easy e trying to help this young black kid group out. And it was the funniest <sighs> thing in the world because I'm like, man, if you want to get old Jewish people to watch this movie, this will make you feel like this Jewish guy is coming in here trying to change the world. And then the black guys turn on him at the end because it's all his their fault, you know? So... <laughs> There's there's a lot of things like that. Um, when you watch trailers internationally, they do the same thing too. I you know, as as annoying as it is, I understand that because again, you try to trick people into thinking something is better than it is. Same thing with romantic comedies. They want guys to watch it, so they put in the most action packed stuff they can sometimes to try and grab you and say, oh well, I could go see this with her. It's, it's not that bad, you know. Um, the one thing that movies do in that vein that irks me is when they hire white guys to play people of color. Oh, whitewashing. Like, you know, yeah, like, oh, yeah. you know, Michael Jackson, going to hire a white guy. And I'm just like, nah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> but, I mean, we couldn't have found a light-skinned black dude and put some baby powder on his face. Like, you really <laughs> got to get a white guy for this, you know? So, so, so they, were, they were talking uh, about that on a Hotline Monday a couple weeks ago. Well, I guess about a month ago. And uh, the idea came up with uh, – what would be the worst movies to whitewash, to, to cast all white actors and actresses in instead of being historically accurate? 
And of course, oh, my, my first thought was roots. Like, could you imagine a whitewashed roots? I think that'd be. Uh, or, or like a, a biopic of like Malcolm X or or MLK or something. Like see, <laughs> that's that's the that's the funniest thing because since you're white, you think of it that way. The first thing I thought of is doing an Abe Lincoln with a black guy. Yeah, or yeah. Forrest Gump as a black yes, guy. Yes, yes. Like, I think the exact opposite. I think of like taking the whitest <laughs> films of white culture that's so deep. You know, a field of dreams with just a whole bunch of Negroes that came back as ghosts that never got to play in the league. Like I think of all the, the blackest nights that I could just ruin white movies with that, that white people just love. Let, you know, let's just the, get a the sound of music, the sound of music, all black cast and white service. Ooh, that'd be hot. Boy, I tell you what, I tell Mary you, Poppins, that movie. Mary Poppins starring Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> uh, well, shoot, they, they, the white people, and, and here's the thing about that. Like, people say all the time, oh, black people get so upset when white guys play uh, Egyptian kings. I'm like, first of all, you can't even give a black man the one chance he has to be a king and own slaves. You can't even let him be black then. You got to put a white dude in that position, okay? And then on top of that bullshit, the motherfucker standing behind him that's the damn servant and the slaves are black, but the king can't be black. Everybody else in the court is black, but the king happens to be a white dude. I'm like, it's Egypt. He at least got to have a tan. How is he so white in Egypt? It's Egypt. And they didn't have sunscreen back then. You know what time period this is, bitch? You still got... I can't. It's just too much. It's just too much. Like, I, you know, I'm just like, why and why? I don't get it, you know. But Annie, white people get so upset. Well, how they got a black Annie? Because some movies are white. White people don't understand. White people make movies. Like I said, you got to trick white people. You want to get a white person to watch a movie about a little poor orphan and blah, 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 blah. Back in the day, it had to be some little white girl with red hair because everybody hated uh, Irish people and redheads. So the Irish girl was the stepchild of existence. But if you yes. want to talk about some yes. poor chick that nobody want her and she a uh, uh, ward of the state, that sounds like a black girl to me. She making her way through town on her own wits and whereabouts. That sounds like a little black kid to me. So when Annie became black, I'm like, well, obviously – Obviously, Annie's black. I think if you described her without any kind of physical description, you'd think that was a little Negro child because that's what it sounds like. She got a whole bunch of little scrappy friends, like even the rascals. You think all the rascals are black because they got that dog and they roll around in the hood. Like, you know, I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to stop, but you know what I'm saying. So, so <laughs> yeah. w how, how did you feel about the new Karate Kid movie? Well, the movie kind of sucked <laughs> uh, in general. And it wasn't even karate. It was kung fu but like you know, details again, details I, I, and it, on its own i thought the movie was pretty good like I, I i watched it not expecting it to be a reboot or anything else just as on its own merit it wasn't bad as a reboot i hated it and that's what i'm saying if they would have just put that movie out and caught it anything and let you just assume that it was a karate kid i'd have been much better yep, yep, but yep. you can't call it the karate kid and not be again, the karate kid nostalgia, i keep bringing it up i got chris reese in my head I got that little, I got Daniel on my head. Like, you can't get him out. Where's Mr. Miyagi? Like, I need certain things. My, and then you put Jackie Chan. Like, Jackie Chan, again, nostalgia. I know who Jackie Chan is. Jackie Chan is a ninja clown. And you can't tell me that a ninja clown is really going to teach some little black kid some stuff about how to defend himself in the Chinese hood. It's not going down like that. The drunken master. <laughs> yeah. Master. Yeah. With a kid that can't drink. Ain't even legal age to drink. You know, at least Daniel's painting a wall. What's he doing? Have a swig of this vodka. Yeah, put your jacket on your back. Yeah, Take like, your yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was... It was just, you know, I, again, fun movie, and my daughter liked it, but I'm like, man, you just should have called it something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. <laughs> just in, anything, even even a, even a similar name would have been fine, but not that name. Like, is was... yeah, I, I I said back then it should have been the Kung Fu Kid. Yeah, even the one where they the the last Karate Kid where they had the girl in there, the one before that back mm. in the day, like mm -hmm. again that wasn't a terrible movie, but it was terrible because I'm comparing it to the Karate Kid. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you can't, you know, it's just like you know you can't do it. So so this Miyagi was in that movie. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this then: How do you feel about uh, about Hollywood's tendency to rehash things, and and when are we actually going to get some some really new ideas pumping through? Because you know how. Hollywood does things in waves. Like it's it's all superheroes, it's all this, it's all that, and then all of a sudden they have this rash of great original programming, and then it starts getting back into the cycle of rehashing old shit again. 
There's all kinds of original programming. It's called The every, Room and all the white Tarantino things movie. that nobody listens to. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Quentin Tarantino's like, you know, the diamond in the rough like type stuff. Somebody tried to tell me the other day they didn't like Quentin Tarantino films. And I'm like, and you call yourself a movie person? Like, I don't, I can't respect you as a movie person if you don't like his movies. Even if you hated the movie, the sheer love should be off of the writing, the context, the time period, and the way it looks. Like, when you watch one of his films, it's legit. Like, it's real. Yep. You know, there's not a moment where you feel like they're not in the desert, they're not on an iceberg. Like, everything feels real, it feels right, and his movies are just awesome. He, he is and he's going to stop soon. He's, he said that he's doing like a set. And he is one of the greatest filmmakers of any time period. Period. So, yeah, you agree. know, you, you get those every once in a while. But for the most part, everything's cookie cutter. Every story is the same, bro. Everything you watch is a love story. I loved her and he loved me. She loved me. I got to kill everybody to get it. She loved me. I loved her. I should have loved her. Now I got to go get her back. Somebody killed my dog. I love my dog, and now I got to replace my dog with a new dog. So, as far as <laughs> what's new oh, and what's you're right. old, you're right. there yep. there is no, you know, everything. Hey, bring bring me up a Nazi movie. Hitler this, mm-hmm. Hitler that. Why'd you kill Hitler? Because I love Jews. Like I want to go back and save the people. Like you know what I mean? Like everything is a love story. So, you know, it, it's it's hard for new stories to break through, especially nowadays with television. And Netflix and people buying independent uh, um, ideas. Mm-hmm. Netflix is gonna is is stealing things left and right where they're putting stuff back out. Shoot, they just brought Pee Wee Herman back, mm. and it is the antithesis of Pee Wee Herman. I watched it with my daughter and a couple of her friends, and it was so cheesy and stupid. And the pace line is exactly the same as the other ones. I remember it exactly. I didn't even enjoy it that much. But you know why I enjoyed it? Because I watched them enjoy it. And seeing them laugh and ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, oh, yeah, when I I was your age, I thought farting was cool, too. Like, you know what I mean? So (laughs) everything is kind of the same. So if if they bring it back, like, in the right way, what you could do if you just took any kind of effort and care with things. The problem is nowadays they just puppy mill out so much crap. Because you have to have 42 movies a year, you know, for every weekend. Right, right. So, yeah. and the indie so, films don't get enough play. You were, you were talking about television being so good. Do you watch Game of Thrones? I do watch Game of Thrones. Oh. Yeah, I'm excited for the new season. That's coming, what, next month, right? Ne- I think next it's month, next month. Like, yeah, season uh, six. 24th or something like that of April. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you watch, or did you read the books, Owen? I did not read the books, and I was going to read the books, and then all the hoopla came about with things being different from the books. So I never mm-hmm. took the time to do that because I was worried about that as an issue. Yeah, yeah I would that's, say because I, I, I read all the books. I read all the books, and I'm caught up on the show. And for uh, up through at least season four, I would say it's ninety percent or better accurate to the books. Season five is where it kind of started to deviate. They were changing like where characters were, and then something happened in a book. But they're gonna say it's this other character that did that event in the in the show. You're still which was pissed off about Sansa. Of the... <laughs> well, yeah, that did bother me a little bit. But um, <laughs> just to just to give you what I was what I was pissed off about, Sansa being raped by Ramsay in season five. That that didn't happen sansa was somewhere else it was somebody else that got raped by ramsey oh. uh but anyway but we're at the point now in the show where it's gonna veer off the they, they are caught up and in some cases past the books yep in the show so now it's it's gonna be a, a very distinct divergence and, and we're probably i would say at least a year out from the next book coming out I still don't think that it's it's such an issue because, as as I stated last time we talked about this, it's like two different tellings of the same story, hundreds of years later, and you know the the minor the minor changes might might be there whatever else, but it's still the same core story with it you know with a couple you know somebody mistook a name when they passed it down uh, you know verbally or whatever else it's still the same story it's just it's two different branches of the of the same conclusion in my in my mind. Right. Well, it's like it's like history books. I mean, 
depending on who wrote the history book, defines what we see as history. Yeah, the victor so writes you can take the story. The same event, whether it's right. So the Civil War, for example, if you are taught the Civil War in the North, you get one version. You get taught Civil War in the South, you get another version. You know, yeah. and that's just a small recent example of history. Yep. So sure, yeah, I can buy that. What do you think? What do you think, go doctor? Um, since I didn't read the books, I could give a hoot nanny as long as it doesn't piss me off like season five pissed me off because there's a lot of stuff going down where I'm like, I understand pacing and you got to stretch it out. But if you don't get shit rolling, I'm going to be really upset. And that's pretty much what it came down to for me. After a while, I'm like, you need to do something. And even at the very end, again, I guess that leads more into the them not knowing where it was going to go. But um, when uh, what's her name? Dragon Queen. What's her name? Daenerys. Daenerys, when she's out there in that field and then all the dudes roll up and I'm like, really, bitch? Like, you are just going to be, like, really? You're going to get caught out here on your own by yourself? There's no way in the world that that would happen the way it happened in the position she was in, yeah. like, by herself. And I'm just like, really? See, that's Really? That's... We're going to end it like this and you're just going to make me mad, like, <laughs> all summer long? You're just going gonna to leave me like this? Hey, your kid walked off into the street. I know everybody was watching her, and I know that you know she's not supposed to be in the street, but we all watched it happen. Maybe she gets hit by a car. Maybe she doesn't, but we're just going to let her do it and then figure out from here. Like, it was just horrible. I think that was, that was a basic remnant of, uh, of the storyline because in the story, in the, in the book, she's only 13 when it starts, as opposed to being that, approximately yeah. 15 for, for the show. And there are, are a few things here and there with the, um, with the Star Kids and with her that that two year advancement that the the TV uh, uh, the producers made on all the child characters is like you have to question like what, would they really do that at that age? But then it's because the in the book they're based two years younger than what they what they are in the show. So I think it's one of those things that you know her going off on her own was kind of like a an ignorance. But anyway, that's all story plot. So yeah, yeah I, but like she I said, also she's got the dragons to back her up. If if shit really hits the fan. That dragon, uh, th th which one is it, Dra Drago or whatever, is is going to come fuck some shit up. But That's does my... she have the dragons, though? Because the dragon's been acting up. <laughs> and they kind of are there. They kind of aren't. They're kind of like little teenagers, too. They're like, fuck mom, we're going to go hang yeah, out but in the streets. Yes, but that's mama. And... If mama's actually in trouble, badass little teenage boy is going to come save mama. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So dude. mom being surrounded by 300 dudes and horses and swords is it any kind of trouble? You're not going to hawk swoop it? Like, okay, case in point. To your point, if they start this show off and this chick hangs out in a tent getting threatened for three months before some shit goes down, I'm going to come to your house and stab you repeatedly in the chest and ask you where the fuck are these dragons at? Because honestly, there's no way in the world that that gets down. Because she didn't look like she was cool with it. She didn't look like she was happy with it. And when they all went out looking for her and her little jewel was left in the grass that they could sniff her off. To, I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Where the dragons at? Oh, yeah, they out getting some dragon tail looking for dragon bitches at the dragon bar. Like, they out here. They teenagers, too. And they ain't got time for mom. They just saved mom from the pit with the other stupid people. And mom didn't listen. Keep hanging out with your little funky friends, mom. I can't keep coming back here to save you. I'm a dragon. I uh, guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly, yes. That, that's so accurate. So speaking of, speaking of changes, um, Apple made an announcement this week. The new iPhone they did. SE. They sure did. And nothing yeah. has changed on it. It's the original. It's the form factor from the five. The most of the guts of the uh, of the six S, and yeah, everything uh, except for the three D touch, basically. It, yeah, yeah. It's got the better camera. It's got the the yeah. It's pretty much a six S in a five S E or five body. Um, yeah. So I wanted to get you get your thoughts on that. Um, I think it's pretty awesome. I, I know a lot of people that are like, even the six is just too big. I really like the original form factor. My mom is one of them. She loves the, the, that phone. She doesn't want anything bigger. It fits in the pocket nice and easy or in the purse or whatever. So do you think Apple is catering to the, tr trying to create a spread or are they just caving to the, uh, the popularity of the smaller form factor? Well, e either way, I think, I think it's a good idea. I think it was a good move on their part because the six, because you're a, a six plus guy. Mm -hmm. The six or six S is that is that is, 
as big as I want to go. The 6 Plus is like, I might as well put my fucking iPad mini in my pocket. That ain't happening. Like, that fucking phone is gigantic. It is too big. And I, t- I totally get the people that That's were said. happy with the 5. You know, the, the size of the 5, <laughs> right. The size of the 5, I think, is uh, I think it's fine. I, I like my 6, or well, 6S, but the same size as the 6. I, well, no, actually, no. Did they increase the size no. from 6 to 6S? Nope. Yeah, okay. So the same form factor as the 6. Anyway, I, that that size works for me. It's it's a little bit bigger, so you got, you, you know got more display, so your YouTube videos look a little bit bigger. But any bigger than that, it's not going to fit right in my pocket. So I totally get the the smaller form factor, but nobody wants a fucking five. The shit doesn't work anymore. It's too like I guess it works, but it's not. You know, you can't do the new shit. It's not fast. So yeah. Upgrade the the guts with the form factor of the five. I think it's a great idea. Uh, Owen, do you think anybody's going to miss the five C with the plastic case? Um, so Apple does. <laughs> Apple is really good at making really great stuff that generally works all the time. At the same time, they are Johnny Come Lately to everything, and then tell you that they're amazing. You know. They're the virgin that gives you a hand job and says, didn't that feel good? And then you've never had sex before. And then they make you wait three years for a blowjob. And you're like, isn't that great? And you think, oh, my God, it's the best. Six years later, you finally get laid and you're no longer a virgin. You're like, why weren't we doing that six years ago? Where was that six years ago? Why did we do that from the start? Why did I just wait through with a hand job? The blow- like, we were in, why? And that's what Apple does. So Apple comes out and they say, Okay, fine. Everybody else has a bigger phone. I'm going to give you two bigger phones because we can't make up our mind on which phone is bigger, to which they should have just made the 6 and not the 6 Plus. They should have just came out with a 6 and been done with it, and then they could have grown into the 6 Plus. Now they have nowhere to go any which way. They come out with the 6 and the 6 Plus, and they're like, oh, this is the greatest thing that's the sliced bread, to which you have had mind control over everybody, your whole existence, telling them smaller, smaller, smaller. So, of course, you're going to have people that can't even fathom having a bigger phone because you've always kept them at that smaller phone. So now you come and give me the 5SE, which you just should have called shit we should have kept around anyway, and tell me that it's the best thing that sliced bread when it's better than my 6. This 5SE is better than my 6 right now, and I'm like, you're so full of shit, Apple, and I hate it. You know another way they fuck up? They come out and they say 10 years ago, oh, a stylus is for pussies. And then they come out and say, oh, we got a pencil. And I'm like, bitch, it's a stylus. Shut up. I can't stand you. Oh, we got an Apple Pro because, oh, Samsung, uh, uh, Microsoft Surface Pro is killing us in these streets. We're coming out with a Pro that does half the extra shit that the other Pro does, but we got a Pro too now. We call it Pro. It's really just an iPad, but it's bigger. Oh, nobody wants a bigger iPad? Let's bring the Pro back down to the size of the original iPad that everybody fucking loves. But people don't buy iPads anymore because you made them so good and the apps aren't any much newer with the technology that it matters that, oh, you fucked up again. I wouldn't understand how you're going to do that, Apple, but I mean, since you've been telling me for so long that a blowjob is the greatest thing in the world, then you reverse me back to a hand job. Bitch, I already know what a blowjob is now, and I'm not going back, so you can tell me whatever the fuck you want to tell me. You just keep making mistakes in this relationship, and that's how Apple does. But again, at least you're getting a hand job, a blowjob, and occasional sex, so I guess you can't be that upset when other people are out here just talking dirty to you on the phone. Like LG <laughs> and uh, you know whatever other kind of tablet HTC you get. You know, yep. So yeah, there you yeah, go. But, but but Apple's hand job is the best hand job you ever had. Oh, ever. that's what I said. That's what I said. It's the greatest thing in the world until you get the, until you get that Apple blow job. Then you're like, oh shit, what is? We should have had this. You should have came out with iPad Minis first. Why did you reverse back to the iPad Mini? Like I said, they keep doing it to themselves. They keep stretching their limit. Then they got to roll it back, and then they got to. Why aren't these laptops have a touchscreen on them? You charge a premium on your fucking MacBook Pros, bro. You charge twice the price of anybody else for the same kind of hardware. Why can't I touch my screen? Why can't I touch my screen? Because you're Apple and you're a piece of shit. And when you put it in there, you're going to tell me it's lighter and more elegant. And when you rub it, you might masturbate afterwards (laughs) because the smoothness of the skin emits lotion upon your hands. And the fixacity of the thin, like, shut up. It's a touch. And screen. they have it in rose gold. So, you know, there's that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Always that. So I, I used to, speaking on that point, I used to get so mad when the kids would go up and, like, touch the screen, especially the, the little kids. 
they'd go up there and like touch the TV, you know, and put their hands on TV and stuff like that until I sat back and watched one day and my daughter was actually like grabbing the screen and trying to turn it like she does on Netflix. Like she was actually trying to swipe the, the cable TV show off the screen because she wanted to watch something else. And I was like, I was like, okay, okay. I kind of get it now. And then I spent about a week and a half only using my, my iPad because of, I was working on my computer and everything else during the when I was formatting and all this stuff. Since then, that was like four or five months ago. Since then, I have not been able to break the habit of reaching over and just touching the screen. Yeah. And oh, wow. like, I know better. <laughs> I, I fucking know better. Like, I, I know in my brain that I'm not going to get any good response from <laughs> smacking the shit out of my screen with my hand, but I'm doing it anyway. And it's a habit I can't break. So now I'm like, all right, where's the damn touchscreen at? Like, I need it now. This is bullshit. It, yeah, it, yeah, it really yeah. is. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I I love Apple, but you you've got some really valid points. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, everything they do is like that, though. They're like, oh, well, now you can text and do this. I was like, I could do that before. Like on everybody else did that. Like, oh, now you're gonna turn my phone. I can split screen it, but only on the on the pro pad. I can't. Sp- like, come on, man. Like that is one thing that pisses me off. Like, do- why can't I do that on my six plus? Like yes, the screen yes. is big enough for it. Like a, exactly. a, because they got to wait to give you that extra feature and tell you that they've done it better than everybody. Like, yo, no, you didn't. Yeah. No, you didn't. The fact that I can't on this big ass screen write on it like you can like a note or something, like you're just missing out, bro. And I and, and even with my finger, I can't do outside stuff. Like with a note, you touch the thing, you get a pinwheel, you could write on anything on any screen and capture it. Like, there's just stuff that they're not doing right. And I love them because they do everything well when they do it. They just don't do anything innovative. Yeah. They're always behind. Like, as much as you think that they're in front of you, like, in general, they used to be when they made a couple of things. Like they made an iPad, an iPod, like, stuff like that. Like, oh, you're like, oh, shit. The iPhone, even the iPhone wasn't the first touchscreen PDA phone or anything like that. There were a lot of other phones out there at the time. They just made it simpler to control it. But at the same time, they're like, they only give you five things when everybody else is giving you ten. And then they, and when they give you the two more of those, you're like, oh, wow, we finally. And I'm like, bro, yeah. people had that two years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I just hope they're not abandoning the bigger phone either. Like, they, they should have just picked one size and not had the plus or only had the plus option. They should only have one of those. I'm, I'm thinking going forward, they're probably going to have three sizes. Like, every announcement from here on is going to be three phone sizes. That, that's That's my prediction with that. Uh, I, it'll and probably, be and probably three three iPad sizes as well. That's, it, that's my it'll guess. be uh, yeah, it'll be pretty interesting. I'm I'm curious as to how that works out because if if they're making three sizes of the iPad and three sizes of the iPhone, eventually they're not. It's not going to have the the turnaround, the the monetary backing on it. You know, they're not going to sell enough of certain sizes or whatever else. So it's eventually well, then they'll just they'll just drop that. Yeah, they'll, they'll eventually they're not selling. Down. One, they're gonna just, they'll just but, drop. But here's the thing about them dropping things: Apple doesn't really drop stuff. Well, you know what it, I mean? Because it breaks. Because dropping it means they failed, and they don't really like to admit failure with things. Like again, even with the iPad, like they're like iPad Air and then iPad Air Two. Like please buy it, you know. Like and again, they're still selling units. But when you make something so good, there's no. I'm still rocking my iPad Four mm. and my original iPad Mini. Hmm. And I have no problems with it. I have I haven't once thought, hmm, I should get a better processor. Not once since I've had them. I and that's a problem. I've got an iPad three, the first Retina version of the iPad, and I it, I did, hadn't even considered upgrading it until I bought my wife's iPad Air two, and to ha- have those side by side and see the major differences. That was the first time that I was like, oh, okay, well, yes, this is a significant upgrade. Four years later. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, my my is greener on the other side too on that, and the the form factor is what sells you on that, like the way it feels too, like not yeah. just the way it looks, the way it feels. It's it, 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 yeah. it feels hella sexy, but I just don't need it. <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel a lot, a lot. It's a lot lighter. It's like half the weight or something like that of my iPad three. So, yeah. Well, and and the thing to to touch back on what I was saying about about dropping a product, you said that they don't truly drop a product. They might stop making that particular form factor, but they're going to support it forever and ever and ever. Like they, they don't make an iPhone 5 anymore, but they're going to support that iPhone 5 for 
probably the next three or four years. You're still going to get your updates. You, you're still going to be run, running the current iOS. So, I mean, they don't drop it. They just stop making new versions. I, 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 I agree with you on principle, but the difference with that is, is like um, the last thing that they dropped that wasn't phased out because of time the thing you're talking about is some time. That, the iPad, the <laughs> iPad. I still have mine too. I have 160 gig. Mine's in the car though. Yeah, it still works um, like a champ, by the way. Oh, it's a beast of a product. Again, beast iPod of a product. Touch. Yeah. No, the, the iPod Classic. I got. I got. Oh, is that I what that? Is that I, what got, you I have the yeah, the yeah, last yeah. edition Classic. of the iPad oh, Classic, oh, uh, yeah, iPod yeah, yeah, Classic, yeah. and the yeah, first yeah. edition iPod Touch. Yeah. And they mm. both so, work like champs. So the Classic, right, they right. they did they did phase out. And then the uh, 17 inch MacBook Pro, they stopped making and my, because my sales were so down. Those are those are the last two things I can remember them taking out. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Well, what they did is they, they brought in the uh, the MacBook Pro Retina and putting that up to a 17 inch screen was cost prohibitive. Like nobody wanted to pay the yeah. the extra premium nope. for the for the both, you know. So. Yep. <clears throat> but. All right. Um, so we we've, we've had a, a a few conversations on the show about uh, copyright and making sure people are given the proper credit. Of course, we all of our our show music comes from from Kevin McLeod and CompTech.com. We make sure we give him credit every time. Everything else, and uh, yep. I, I ran across this this week, uh, and I just want you to listen to to this. This is I found this to be amazingly hilarious. This is Eastern Shore Broadcasting making a video called ATR2100 Review, Wirecast 6 Tutorial, and VMix 14 Tutorial. So All in one? All in one. Well, they, they actually took the Wirecast 6 Tutorial from another site, and at the end of that, that part of it comes this. They utilize within Wirecast, so um, they just wanted to show you that. And that's Stephen. Thank you, Stephen, for bringing that to us. Actually, Stephen doesn't know he brought it to us. <laughs> we used it uh, off of YouTube, which I guess means it's in the public domain. What? Whoa! Whoa! That's <laughs> so, not necessarily true. So everything on YouTube is in the public domain, according to Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> that's... <laughs> Oh, see, I'm all for fair use. I like fair use is the most wonderful thing when it comes to streaming things on the internet. I mean, come on. But saying that something's in the public domain is not yours. It's not. What are you doing? Yep. Oh. And, and and to be fair, they did in the comments of the video they did mention Stephen Haywood of the Tech Buzz and give, give a proper link. Um, but no, like no, yeah, no that, that's it. of the statement. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just that, that there it is. So <sighs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So Owen, what, what if you had a, a you, you had an episode of a, of a podcast out there and somebody took it and just streamed it into their own original thing Free and booting. didn't credit you at all. Like they're just like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks Owen. And then went on with the rest of their show. So first things first, uh, Captain Sergeant McMuffin Pants, he's putting all these images in the chat, and I don't know if he's got copyright for these images. Y'all ain't saying <laughs> shit about that. Y'all didn't say nothing about him putting up in here Jafar from Aladdin. I'm gonna call it out. He coming. He got Disney clips. He got movie <laughs> clips. Y'all ain't saying shit. So first of all, y'all don't give a fuck about no guy's copyright because y'all be doing it all the time. You can't even think about it. You just brought up my name. I didn't give you permission to have my name just because I'm on the show. Doesn't mean I give you permission to say my name and say what I say or what I'm going to do. At this point in life, I just assume we all stealing stuff, and that's the way it goes. There's too much stuff floating around. There's too much content. I could really give a shit. If somebody stole my line, then God knows my voice doesn't sound like many others. So if I said something that they want to clip and or use a picate, I assume that that's awesome. I ended up on the nightly news one night, and Katie Couric said that she liked me because of something funny I put on the internet. Did the bitch pay me? No. Sorry, Katie. Don't mean to call you a bitch. You know, I love you, girl. I never disrespect you like that. I'm just on a roll. You know what I mean? I apologize, Katie, in case you hear this sometime. But anyway, back to my point. 
She put me on national television with no clothes on and said, did she like me? Did I get a check? Did I get a phone call? Did I get a, hey, I'm using your... No, it's fair use because she's a news lady. Well, guess what? I'm a newsman. And they say, oh, where are your credentials? And on this fucking piece of paper, I'm about to write down right now that I am a newsman <laughs> because I talk about things online. I Look, bro, I know that it sucks if somebody steals somebody's stuff, but at the end of the day, Facebook is doing it to everybody and doesn't give a flying fuck about your content so i assume that it's okay if facebook can break the law then god damn it i will too matter of fact if i had the time i'd sift through your in beta shows and steal the greatest content you got available stream it from my own on my own site and then say it was mine because bitch you're still in beta and none of that shit's legit and or real <laughs> so i don't know if i appreciate it and i don't know if i'm against it or not I'm just saying it's what we do. And Captain McMuffin, I got my eyes on your bitch ass in the chat room with all this pontificating and pitchifying that you putting up on shit. There you go. Steal or be stolen from. That's your only option. Come on here, bitch, about it if you want to at 12 o'clock at night on a fucking Friday telling me about how you feel about somebody just stealing your podcast in the middle of the night. Woo! It's such horrible things. Have you ever talked about sports? Have you ever told a story that wasn't yours? Have you ever shared a story that you found amusing and told it to somebody else? Hmm? Have you? Tell me you have it. Lie to my face on the internet. Lie to me. No, I never have, Owen. I never, never. Oh. All my stuff's original. Original thoughts. Nobody ever had these thoughts. And that's why your shit's in beta always be in beta, <laughs> never getting out of beta, because you ain't stole a good story in your life. I know one thing. When you go to bed tonight, you're going to tell your wife, man, I was on the phone with this funny motherfucker, and you're going to tell my story. I know you're going to, so don't lie to me again on the Internet. You're thieving some of my Mitch. <laughs> so no, so no, essentially what I'm, what I'm getting over. I got out of this whole thing was that you're going to, archive or go back into our archives and you're going to make a best of reel and put it on your shit which means that I can go on there and steal your shit of our shit and we'll have a best of reel like, I, so, I, I that's what I'm waiting for I, Ken, I'm stealing his shit, I'm going on his podcast just taking sound clips and throwing them on the show randomly from now on that, Damn hey, right. look, <laughs> yeah, You got a soundboard? <laughs> Y'all got rights for that soundboard? Huh? Yes All, all the little, all the little uh, voice hey, clips, hey, the, all the, of them? The, the soundboard's legit. Nothing else in the show okay. might be, but the soundboard's legit. Yeah, the rest of it's the rest of it's in beta, but the soundboard <laughs> is on. The soundboard's point. legit and the porn music's legit. At least we got that. We got we got the porn music and the soundboard. We got a, a foundation of legitimizing in these streets. I you know, I respect that. I oh. apologize for yelling at everybody except for Captain McMuffin stuff and his damn picture posting in the dang gum comments taking up four lines of content. Every five seconds. You don't own Jafar, McMuffin. You don't own Jafar. <laughs> All right, so uh, so we. Actually... I would love I would love for Dan to come on here and uh, and confront the doctor, but uh, we'll we'll see if that happens. That would be that would be fucking amazing. Dan, uh... Dan comes around. You better come and get this money. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Out here getting this off the leg. Yeah, here telling me he got he got enough money. Ain't enough money. You got enough money. You need to give me some money back. Royalty checks. <laughs> Something. It's paying you for those yeah, ideas. No, he didn't have I, copyrights I, too. I, but I, I do understand fair use, and I get it. But I'm just saying, there so many places <laughs> steal content, and people are okay with it at times, and then not okay with it other times. Right. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. Especially in the news, you know, if something goes viral and it works out for you, oh, you're so happy they stole it. If, if you know what I mean. So that's why you so, got to put so logos nothing. on your stuff and tags on your stuff, diamond club it up, and you know, put things on your content so that when someone takes it, it's there. Right there. Uh, Sergeant Muffin in the, in the chat room says it's okay, be, though, because my video description, I'll put no copyright infringement intended, which is kind of like <laughs> no, shooting somebody dead and then saying no murder intended. I didn't mean I didn't intend to murder yeah. them. I, I, I just you did. You might have died. Like all 17 of you might have died, but I didn't intend murder going into it. <laughs> so so there's that. Um, we did have some feedback this week. A uh, friend of the show, Cabo, Cabo yeah. Wabo 79 says, here's a good story for you. And he posted a link to Pornhub launching a new channel devoted to VR porn. Now, this was discussed earlier this week in, in the Daily Tech News show. Um, I, I, like, <laughs> I can show you the world. <laughs> Owen's about to pull out his Google Cardboard. He, he's, I think, he's, on, yeah. he's on a VR, VR porn right now. I'm just saying, my aim is so good, you might not even see me with my camera when I blast on it, boy. I just put the whole screen 
I had to get all up in my 3D breast assist. It's like they flapping in my face right now. It is amazing. <laughs> amazing. This, this is one of those things that it kind of surprised me it took this long. I didn't realize it had taken this long for, you know, Pornhub and, and other porn sites to to uh, come out with VR porn. Like, they're, they're always the first ones like, hey, 1080p is available. We got 1080p porn. 4K is available. We got 4K, 4K. porn. You know, VR is available. Give us Sh- a minute. Seamus Amos, Give let me ask minute. you a question. Yeah. Um, who the fuck has VR in their hands yet? Uh, nobody. They were waiting for people to actually get the units, which are starting to ship now. So they've been waiting people, on it. 17 people on have it. Google Cardboard. So <laughs> there, there was a small market. I don't, I don't know when the last time. Are you, are you married? I don't know. I don't know much about your lifestyle. going I'm on. Not, no, no, no. I'm, I'm. I'm basically married. I'm, okay, I'm, so you have a significant I'm divorced, other. I'm divorced, but I, I, yes, I have a significant other. Yes. Okay, well, let me tell you something about cardboard. When you jerk off with cardboard, it kind of evaporates a little bit. So I don't think <laughs> Google cardboard is the kind of stuff you want to be doing. Like, after I jerk off, I got the, the moisture and the liquids all in my hand, and I got to peel it off my face. Next uh, thing you know, my cardboard is so disintegrating. The, right, so it's real a one-time, VR, bro. A one-time use and that's expensive. That's expensive. We need real VR. We, you know what I'm saying? They had to wait for the legit... You know what I mean? Like something legit had to come through for them to just say, okay, we're ready. They've had it ready. They've been waiting. They done shot so many VR movies, you have no idea. As a matter of fact, I know they shoot VR movies because, uh, let me put this in a way that is a disclaimer for myself. I've seen porn and instances where they've shot in 360 with all the GoPros and they didn't have anything to even use it on yet. But they had it and they could do it on like on a computer where you could scan through it. But now you can put the goggles on, you can actually see the videos. So they've had these videos and stuff ready for over a year, waiting, brother, just waiting. Like I said, cardboard not conducive to masturbation. I'm not saying I know why, but I'm just saying I know how. <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> so that you know, that, that's a good point though, talking about VR because uh, PlayStation, Sony just announced uh, probably right about a week ago that PSVR is coming out and it's going to be what three hundred, three hundred or four hundred dollars, I think, for the. The basic setup. I believe it's three ninety nine yeah, for the basic. Got a bundle for four ninety nine. Yeah, the bundle's four ninety nine. The the wands, the camera. the camera. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't think it comes with the camera though. I think the it, camera was the, the only thing missing from that bundle. No, yeah. it com- it comes with the, the the camera because Tom Merritt had to figure out what he's going to do with his extra camera when he ordered the bundle. Oh shit. Okay. Well, I, I guess I read the article wrong. Okay. Well, but yeah. So, but it's about to become mainstream. But there's also the the, the Vive and the Oculus Rift, but they're like, those are PC rigs, and they're going to be like way more expensive. We're talking like five, six hundred dollars for just, those rigs. So who's who's buying a a, a fifteen hundred dollar rig with the the well, that's, Oculus that's, that's, in I, order to watch porn on a free porn site? Just, like, <laughs> right, just to watch porn. Yeah. When like, Google Cardboard is what sixteen dollars? <laughs> Well, Again, I mean, you can't they, use if it. If you have a Samsung, I guess you can get the Samsung thing for ninety nine dollars. Like that's your cheapest entry rate into the whole thing. Like you can get the Samsung setup for ninety nine bucks. And again, no. Okay, so you know, if, if you wanted to get cool with it, they do have the porn that um has like Bluetooth that you can get with a partner. Where mm. like if they squeeze something, it squeezes you, and like vice yeah, versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, if that's you had for a couple it, years now, yeah. So if you had that with like some VR. That'd be cool, or you know, what I mean, if you had a device that you could put upon your body or in your body at some point that went along with VR. I mean, there's all kinds of things that be going on in this world, but uh, the thing is getting into people's households. You know, I, I, the only way they're gonna trick me into buying that for my PlayStation is if they do come out with an upgraded PlayStation, like the 4.5 they're talking about, right, with yep, the 4K yep. stream or something like that. That I might buy that PlayStation and a complete bundle, but if not, if they don't have a new PlayStation coming out, I'm waiting until. There's at least five or six games out that are like viable, you know, for right. me to like yep. care because, again, Virtual Boy, Lawnmower Man, this shit's been promised to me for a long time, bro. Uh, and just because absolutely. you're telling me there's a $3,000 machine that only tech review nerds are going to buy, like nobody else is going to buy that. Hmm. No one. Like maybe three hardcore gamers, but most of it's going to be the people that review it that are going to pay that kind of money. And even six, eight hundred bucks, it's like, well, what am I getting with that? What kind of title? Yeah. They're not going to buy that unless they can write it off in their taxes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Jeff Kanata and Scott Johnson are the only people I know that are going to have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally different Le- thought. Leo, Leo, they'll get one on Twitter and wear it like a doofus. 
So that that does bring up one interesting point, though. Um, how how likely is it that the PlayStation is going to be able to access any kind of porn content in its VR system? It accesses mm. porn content now. Really? Yeah, you can just open up a browser. Well, I guess, yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying, porn, porn smart, bro. They they they're the first ones to get on your mobile tablet. Like, porn porn knows what they're doing. They got they got R and D out the ass, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, so there it is. We we uh, we officially support the the VR porn. Let it go with that. <laughs> yeah. All right, freedom of speech. <clears throat> so it, it is that time of the show that uh, I love making fun of because it's a mandatory part. But everybody, uh, you know, everybody has to do it, but nobody likes to. Oh, doctor, where can people find more from you? Um, at O Doctor on a Twitter. Or uh, IQMZ.com. I'm doing a whole bunch of podcasts. I just did a sports podcast this week. I just started Doc Tales, where I tell you funny stories like stuff I was yelling at you about today. Just trying to live the dream and be like you guys, but just get out of beta. See, I don't call mine beta. I just call it I'm putting stuff out, and hopefully I'm on time with it. And if I'm not, then fuck it. <laughs> but beta sounds nicer. Beta sounds cool. It's like it's, a, it's like a single beta, beta single word like form of what you just said. So I know I know when when you say you're in beta, it just lets me know how low you are on jokes. But I know that you're not stealing content from other people. Oh <laughs> so damn! You gotta, shots you, you fired. Gotta, you got to keep the bits going. I get the bit. I get it. But like I said, when you're not stealing other people's content, it's hard to get out of beta. That's all I'm saying. I, I know with the porn music and everything, it, we're good. I appreciate you guys having me. No, no doubt. No disrespect. No oh shit! No Love you too, Owen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We all good in the streets. So 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 awesome. There you go. Um, you can support this show by going on richmisery.com, hitting swag, buying shirts like this one right here, with the logo I stole oh, from yeah. Sergeant Muffin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stolen content. I mean, I mean, free. Uh, free if, if I'm stealing from the um, stealer, does that make me better or worse than the original? You could be Robin Hood. You could be stealing jokes and giving them to the poor. Maybe, maybe your audience isn't hearing all these awesome jokes that are going on in these streets, and you're passing them along. <laughs> money. Look, I'm telling you. Money. Look, oh, if y'all want God. this money, y'all just got to get out of beta. Then the money's going to start rolling in. Trust me. There it is. There it is. We've officially been progressed beyond beta. Uh, we just need to have Tay Allen on here so we can go back to alpha again. Um, that's what that's how you got to do it. You got to lie to the people. You know, what's that thing? Uh, what's that thing? What's the saying? Mmm. Act as if. Act as if. Act as if. Yes. Oh, your, your new tagline should be, bitch, been an alpha. Like, we've been an alpha, bitch. I don't even know why everybody keeps talking about this beta stuff. We've been rolling alpha dogs since 88. Like, we've been doing it. Oh, man. All right, Kent, where can people find you at? You can find me on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. You can also go to rapebeer.com if you're a beer guy and or or gal. And look up username Del Noche, and you can see what I've been rating. You can also go to at Film Zone Cast. <laughs> Film Zone and Cast. That that is a new Twitter account that is going to be the outlet for a new podcast that is coming soon, and it is going to launch not in beta. It's going to be a full up podcast. If it right if it out launches. Of the gate. If we it got launches. five episodes in the can. It's ready to come out. It's me and Movie Man Lucas in the chat. We're talking about movies. We're talking about trailers. We're talking all kinds of uh, nerdy speculation about nerdy movies coming out. Check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. So that's that. that and it will Super be launching happy. very soon. Probably, probably this weekend it will be launching. Amos, where can we find you? Uh, right here. I'm here. I'm I'm right here. Here all the time. I'm in the chat room. Like I live in the chat room. Um, Ethan Kane on Twitter because I like having multiple names. You can follow the show on Ritual Misery uh, on Twitter. Submit ideas or subreddit ritualmisery.reddit.com. Email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail. That'd be amazing. We've gotten one voicemail and it was the wrong number. It's great. It was so beta. Um, <laughs> five six seven six nine TRMPC. <laughs> That's 567-698-7672. Of course, you can find all these links in more ways to support the show. Support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music without freebooting it. And for Kent, for me, for Odocta, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya.
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>